All righty, good morning, 845 on a beautiful Monday. Is it beautiful? I don't really know, but the sun's out, so we're here. And Billy Levitt is here with us, and he is from Texas Farm Credit. So I have a, a pamphlet from Billy, and you can't see it, but you can see this. Let me pull up his website. So there's Billy's website. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about what Billy does as a lender and how good of a person he is and all those types of things. So the first thing that you might know is Billy's first name is Billy and his last name is Levitt. Levitt also in the real estate industry, you can equate with Debbie Levitt, who's also a very experienced real estate agent uh, that is in my wife's group one network. So she is a top achiever and a great person there as well as an agent. And Billy happens to be a lender that does uh, ag loans. Would that describe it correctly or land or rural or all those words together? Actually, everything, including residential. All right. So go ahead, Billy. You can speak up and you can speak directly into the microphone as best you can. And you can tell us all about what we would like to send to you, probably you know, the, the biggest niche to start with where he can differentiate himself a little bit with us is anything that is not standard loan with us. So that's where we're going to uh, gain the most value from you today is you telling us about different things. Uh, we've started to have an increasing amount of people that are like, hey, Frisco's awesome. And I really like my neighbor being about 12 feet away from me, but I would like a little bit more land, a little bit more space. And I want to go to some of these outlying areas. And Billy, I was looking through some of your locations here that you guys have. And I was like, I don't even know where most of these are. Uh, you have one in Paris. Our son was in Paris, France last year. Is that yeah, the same Paris? That's Paris, Texas. That's Paris, Texas. Okay. So there are a couple areas here that Billy has offices. He's not in all of them simultaneously, but he does service locally where we are. So go ahead and talk and tell us a few okay. things. Let's start with what is the one thing that somebody should know? Do you have notes here? Yeah. You I have notes. All right, go ahead. Take it sheet. away. So Take it away, Billy. Let me tell you first what we can't lend on. Single wide mobile homes and construction loans with less than 10 acres. Other than that, we, can, we offer the full gamut. Um, our specialty, our wheelhouse is rural financing. Um, what that is, is a home that sits on whether it's two acres or 150 acres. We can provide uh, financing for it. And a lot of times, most of our borrowers will qualify for up to 95% financing, just like a normal conventional loan with the same great rates. In fact, I would say our rates, if you compare them, are much more competitive than the majority of lenders out there. And why is that so? Because we're part of Texas Farm Credit. We don't price our mortgage products like typical mortgage companies do. We only set a certain mar margin that we receive. So for example, our 30 year FHA is 3.875 today with no points. Um, our conventional loans today are four and a quarter or actually, I guess not today because today's a holiday, but Friday, <laughs> Friday we were at four and a quarter on a 30 year fixed uh, on a conventional top loan. But All right, so let's tell everyone what the margin is and what that what that actually means for them. So when when we're talking lending, there's the, the interest rate and then there's the, the margin that goes on top of that. So every lender gets their money and it's based on, go back to the Fed funds rate, but it's lenders build on what, they buy their money from, so to speak. So um, a lender may add three or four points on an FHA loan or two points on a conventional top loan. Um, and our margins are much less than that. We're not, um, we're not geared to be the profit center that most mortgage companies, if that makes sense. We're part of a cooperative. Um, cooperative, okay. Very good. Um, so getting back to where, what we offer, obviously we offer rural financing, but we also offer conventional financing, FHA, VA, USDA. Uh, we can loan on sticks and bricks in, in the city, or we can loan, like I said, on a 150 acre track with a house on it. 
our wheelhouse is rural financing, obviously, and our expertise and our knowledge in that area is very valuable to someone that's showing a client out there because I get probably two or three deals a month that someone has gone with a, you know, a typical mortgage broker, and then they get towards the finish line and the lender either comes back and says, oh, it's got an ag exemption. You're going to have to give up that ag exemption, or we're going to have to break this tract up and we can only give you five acres and it presents a lot of problems or they get to the very end and they say, well, um, the house is not, uh, the house has to be worth at least 50% of your total value. So the land can't be worth a so, lot too large of a percentage. Yeah. Yes. So let's, let's say you have a $500,000 contract and the house comes in valued at, 175,000, uh -oh. then most of those lenders are going to say, well, we, we can't do this, but that's where we come in. And that's where we're very valuable in, in helping the real estate agents and clients with this type of product. So you deal with a lot of extensions. Is that what you're saying, Billy? Um, a lot of extensions <laughs> actually are not extensions because we get them and, and, and they have to start over. <laughs> but I will tell you as um, some people think that rural financing is going to take many months to close a transaction. I normally think not, three. That's not. The no, day. it's not three months. Um, I had a transaction the other day. Actually, it was one of these situations where someone was buying a log cabin and um, they couldn't get it done with the investor because the house wasn't worth their percentage. And I took the loan out in, um, I think it was like the 4th of January and we closed it on the 22nd, somewhere around there. Wow. Um, that sounds 18 days. Yeah. I mean, we've done several that we get from contract to final approval in 15 days. All right. So some of the big things, the big words when they come up is basically when the land ends up being too large of a percentage of the, the total deal price, it becomes difficult for a what we in our normal business as agents would consider a traditional lender like Brandon Hearn, for example, the lender that we utilize most of the time. Um, also, if the land is larger than 10 acres, is that also a good cutoff? Well, I can, we can loan on any. No, loan. you can, but like uh, our local people where the yeah, things that become problems that they need, if this happens. So what I'm really looking for is if the agent runs into this problem in this scenario, your first call should be to Billy to right. make sure right. that. So if the land is worth too much compared to the house, like it's a small house and it's a big land and it's really a land purchase, not a home purchase, mm -hmm. right? Because we talked the other day on TNT about when, you, uh, when you're normally building in like Frisco or Plano or one of those areas, that the land is worth 20% of the value of the completed project at the end if you're looking for a, a rough thumb, uh, rough rule of thumb. Now, once you go further out, the land becomes a larger amount because the property is typically larger, right? So in those scenarios, that's where you kind of excel. Right. Now, you were also saying something about... Um, about ag exemptions. Okay, ag exemptions really create havoc in the mortgage world. Uh, lenders are afraid of the ag exemption because mm -hmm. obviously of rollback, uh, rollback taxes. But in the ag world with Texas Farm Credit, we, we welcome those. We're not afraid of the ag exemption. So it's, okay. it, it makes it really um, attractive to someone that is looking to move up or buy property, but they can't afford Frisco or McKinney mm -hmm. or and they can go out and buy 20 acres and a house on it and their taxes are a lot lower. Yeah. Now when you're talking, power. when you're talking about that, yeah, no, you're correct. The ag exemption, is that going to be on the land or the land and the house? Great question. So if it's just land, obviously it's on the land, but if someone goes and buys a 25 acre tract with a house, the ag exemption is going to be based on all the land except an acre that the county uh, appraisal district district is probably going to require to be taxed as a homestead exemption for the home. 
Right. Okay. So you would have two rates. One would be the traditional prevailing rate for the one acre roughly mm -hmm. and the house, which would have your uh, homestead exemption on it. Then the other, in that case, 24 ish acres. Uh, just think about it. If you yeah. Have 25 acres and the contract price is 500. And let's say the house is valued with the county for 150. You're yeah. only paying that tax rate on that on 150. And the ag exempt taxes on that are going to be thousand dollars or less. Yeah, no. So that's a really, really big deal. Now, so that's where you can end up when you're talking about the total dollar amount on a monthly basis that somebody pays, it's going to be principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So if we break those numbers down, Billy's saying the principal payment is going to be larger in his because his interest rate is lower, right? So principal and interest, and then taxes, ag exemption, if that qualifies, is there a certain amount of land that you have to have to qualify for an That's ag exemption? That's a great question. It's going to depend on the county. Okay. Some counties don't have an, uh, a minimum. A lot of counties will have a 10 acre minimum. Um, okay. So I can just put a, a beehive out there and I'm going to be fine. A, they're very good questions. Oh, so, okay. Uh, you may win the prize. All right. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. That's a teaser. So um, there are two types of exemption. There's an ag exemption and a wildlife exemption. A wildlife exemption is if someone has the beehives or typically a wildlife exemption requires three components to qualify for a wildlife exemption. It might be bird feeders, okay. beehives, deer feeders, yep. you know, things like that. And they're, it's just this, it's a, basically the same tax rate as a, as a ag exemption. Oh, so, okay. That's interesting. So wildlife and ag, same price. And um, then you said another word that kind of scared me a little bit. And uh, were you talking about shopping at Walmart with a rollback or what was rollback that? Rollback taxes. Oh, that was a tax situation. Yeah, the rollback okay. taxes. If, if you lose your ag exemption, then the county can go back five years and tax you on those taxes. Five years. Yes, sir. That's why most mortgage lenders are afraid of the because of the uncertainty related to it right. and the potential large cash flow issue. Correct. Whoa, yeah, because Billy was just saying that maybe the taxes on ag exemption are a thousand. In our local area, we know that our taxes are much, much larger than that. So you can imagine the difference between the two times five that would present a real issue. If that happened, would you finance that into the loan for them? Or how do you deal with that? Is that just an escrow shortage or well, we what do you do? We don't deal with that. Oh, you don't deal with it. You just put it on the consumer. We, I mean, once, um, it's very rarely that an ag exemption is lost. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, that's good. Yes. Because the consumer is good. Who would want to give up the ag exemption? Uh, not a logical person. So yeah, no, you're right. So you would do something to get it. You would not incur that expense. You would rather put a beehive or you would do something along those lines yeah. or, okay. All right. I'm starting to get this. I'm learning a little bit. So you've added a lot of value today in doing something a little bit different. So I'm, I'm really happy that you were able to come in this morning and spend some time with us because you explained to all of our agents different things regarding loans than we typically deal with. I will tell you that we're starting to get a lot more of those related things going on in our world right now. I see that nobody currently has any questions. So Billy must be covering everything really, really well, but he does have a giveaway. So I have a couple of items here for everybody. Billy gave us some flyers with his information on them and it's got his face on the back. So you'll always remember who he is. I'll have these and make them available for you guys when you pick, when you come by for your agent meetings this week, those will be available for you. Um, when I put this up to our Wikipedia page, I'll also put Billy's contact information, his email address, and his cell phone. He has his license number here, but I don't really think that's too relevant for us. He's going to stay legal with us and not cause us I, I would like to add one thing, if you don't mind. Add a lot. We can also help with construction loans, um, but it has to be on 10 acres or more. Um, if it's raw land, someone's purchasing, it has to be 10 acres or more or a construction loan. But if you have someone that's going out to buy a piece of property and they want to build, 
we can provide that construction. Time. So I want to talk more about that. I'm going to do an, a bonus show afterwards, okay. but I'm going to get everyone off at nine o'clock so they can get done with their normal time schedule. And then we'll keep Billy around for a couple minutes and keep it live. And you can stay tuned if you want to hear more about construction related loans. Oh, we have personally worked with Billy and wow. All right. Shauna had a, an endorsement, not just a comment or a question, but rather in an endorsement. So that is really good. So Billy, you brought something in here. So why don't you take over and tell us what you got? So this is a little giveaway. It's a cutting board that my little hobby that I make. Um, and I wanted to bring this as a gift to y'all. So um, it's really nice. What's in the corner? You got your logo down there? So that's my little signature. Uh, it's M 1926. And there's a card in here that will explain and also oh. has how to care for your cutting board. I like that. Wow. Personally made. And it's got an inlay in here, you were saying as well, right? Turquoise inlay. Turquoise. So if you're into turquoise, you're into things that are, <laughs> Is this is Texas made? This is Texas right made, here, Texas pride. Right here. In the, this is more Texas than a Ford. That's right. Okay. I like that. And it was grown here in Texas as well. Did any so. parts of it go overseas to get assembled? No, it didn't. There was no overseas assembly required. Okay. Well, that is really good. So you're going to give this away to somebody here today. And you had a question. I'm going to recuse myself. The last time I, the last giveaway, I had such a bad guess that I'm gonna recuse myself from this one. Go ahead with your question, Billy. What are the two things we don't lend on? What are the two things that Billy does not lend on? Yeah, you, you have to just chat it in. Shauna, you are eligible. I didn't remove you. <laughs> now remember, Shauna won last time. Single wide and under 10 acres new construction. Correct. Whoa, Mike Shepard. Fast, out of the gate, been paying attention the whole time. I'm impressed. That's why Mike Shepard is a badass. That's why he's currently the champ. Shauna, you were a little bit too slow. Nice job, Mike Shepard. We'll have this here for you. You can carry it around with your belt as well, and uh, it'll be awesome. We're very, very proud of you, Mike Shepard, for knowing that answer. Way to go. And so that's going to conclude this episode of TNT. We're going to go, this is going to be like bonus time with Billy. So we're just going to go bonus time with Billy and keep talking. So you were talking about um, construction loans. Construction. So we'll put this up for Mike. All right. So construction loans for commercial, right? Not commercial. Not commercial. It residential construction financing available for 10 acres or more. 10 acres or more, and can I put a barn or a shop on there? If I want to put a shop, yes. does it? Is there a restriction to the amount of structures? It's going to depend on your comps. Uh, we get some very complicated properties um, with an arena, uh, pole barns, tractor barns, um, sh workshops, mm -hmm. guest quarters. Oh, yeah. for an Airbnb? Oh, yeah. Um, now, Interesting. Without uh, confusing y'all too much, the more complicated the property gets, the fewer options we have for placing that yeah, construction loan that makes sense. permanent. So it, it might stay within the association as a portfolio loan. Mm -hmm. um, we've got th basically three secondary lenders. Uh, one of them, I probably closed 95% of my loans through. They're the most aggressive. They offer 95% financing, 30-year wow. uh, fixed. Uh, we can do jumbo financing. Um, there's acreage limitations on that. But if you have something like that, it's best just to call me and let's review the property. Uh, the other thing that is very important in rural financing is the appraisal. Okay. Um, you, will, uh, you will have the typical lender that has their AMC appraisal management company that they're required to order the appraisals. So you mm -hmm. don't know who the appraiser is going to be. Correct. But if we have a uh, construction loan, we order the appraisal ourselves. I can talk to the appraiser. Um, yeah, it's very valuable. That uh, sounds impressive. Um, that's probably the 
biggest issue besides ag exemptions and the valuation is the valuation of the home and land is the appraisal because let's say and this actually happened last year someone bought a, a old silo and renovated it into a house okay how are you going to appraise that the silo the typical appraiser is probably not going to be able to or want to waste his time on that but on the silo house uh, no a barn dominium maybe but a silo yeah, house the probably barn not. are so common now but <laughs> yes. uh, here's another example i had a log cabin deal that i mentioned earlier and it when i first got it i, I didn't think i was gonna be able to do it it looked like the original house that the clampets lived in before they went to hollywood okay and um we had an appraiser done go out and we worked it that out. worked yeah. all right let me walk through a really difficult scenario and you can tell me some of the different things stump, that would go into this no 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 not no no not at all this is you're <laughs> totally gonna be able to handle it i think but let's talk through because you were talking about i talked about different structures and things that could be on it so let's take a 50 acre property mm -hmm. so it's got a lot of land to it and the reason i went with that is because the land's going to be worth more than the structure initially right so then we're going to put a normal house on it that's going to be worth two hundred thousand dollars in this case okay. okay then we're going to go because it's something you might like we're going to put a shop on it okay so now we have a structure over there mm -hmm. then we're going to be like oh there's a little pond over here and we're going to put uh two airbnb units around it that we're going to put together later and they're going to be a little bit smaller and the reason is I'm asking these questions because there should be different revenue sources. And I want to see how you guys look at that. So just talk about a scenario that would like that. That would definitely be something we would portfolio with you within the association. Okay. Now the interest rates are going to be higher mm -hmm. on our portfolio product because of the uniqueness. Um, but what part scared you the Airbnb? Yeah, the, the, the multiple structures when you have more than just a guest house okay. and, a, and a primary because of comps. So did you hear that? Mike Shepard, uh, who won the cutting board, is an Airbnb expert. He was actually listed as one of the top 50 destinations for Airbnb. I'm going to say in the world, but I actually think that might be stretching it a little bit. But he had an article written on him because he's an Airbnb wow. master. So there's awesome. that. Yeah, and he knows how to answer I may questions have to too. Hand deliver this cutting board. Whoa, yeah, no, it'd be really good. He's got a good place. He really does. <laughs> All right, so that is good. So uh, it would be portfolio. It's going to be roughly how much higher of an interest rate because of uh, which it, we, two and a half. Okay, points higher. Okay, two and a half points higher. Okay, but less than a commercial loan or less than um, you know. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, it, it's a very different loan, so it sounds reasonable. So basically, there's there's two parts to the Texas Farm Credit. Um, there's the ag lending side and there's the mortgage side. I'm, I'm part of the mortgage division. So if you have someone that's buying a recreational hunting ranch. Oh, OK. Call me and I'll refer you to one of our ag lenders. OK. Uh, or if it's raw land. Um, um, what if I want to drill an oil well? Good luck. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you're not going to finance the oil well drilling no, no, expedition? No, okay. No, we won't do any type of commercial financing. It has to be stone related. quarry. It has to be related. <laughs> to but it's got a house on it. Next thing you're going to ask is put a convenience store out there and sell lottery tickets whoa no i wasn't asking that i was gonna sell cigarettes <laughs> just only cigarettes <laughs> okay all right billy well thank you very much thank i think you. we covered enough here and we're good to go thank you guys